It ain't easy being green. This video is about making greener cements. My name is Tyler Lay, and I am a concrete freak. A big thanks to Kermit the Frog, my compatriot, on this video, and also to the Portland Cement Association for sponsoring this video to promote their new website, greenercement.com. Did you know that 5% of the CO2 emissions from the world are from the production of concrete? For every one pound of cement that we produce, that's around 0.9 pounds of CO2 emitted to the atmosphere. I talk a lot about this in this video. You should definitely check it out. So what in the world can we do about this? Well, one thing we can do is use less cement. And I know what you're thinking like there, use less cement? No! I mean, cement is the stuff that glues all of the rock and sand together. If we use less cement, doesn't that scare us all a little bit? Well, historically, we've been replacing cement with something else that also acts as a binder, like fly ash. A lot of times people use about 20% replacement of cement with fly ash. Fly ash is a waste product from the coal fire power plant industry. Or you can use slag, 35%, so usually a pretty safe number you can use. Take out 35% of your cement. Replace it with slag. Slag, that's from the production of steel. But there's a new game in town, limestone. What? 10% limestone? Yeah, limestone's like a rock, right? How can you use rocks? Haven't we been using rocks in concrete forever? Well, this is a little bit different. You take a rock, you smash it, and you make powder, and you add the powder to the concrete. This material's gotta be finer than cement, but not too fine. You gotta get it just right. And this is called a Portland limestone cement, or a PLC. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on for the rest of this video, or PLCs, because they're pretty awesome stuff. I've used them, I'm a big fan. A PLC is a blend between 5% to 15% limestone and Portland cement. It's a blend. It comes to you that way. And PLC, on average, uses about 10% replacement of limestone. So why would you ever do this? Why would you ever add the limestone to the cement? Well, this graph's gonna tell us why and why it's important. And on the y-axis, it's the change in the compressive strength. So everything that's above, it means it went up. Everything that's below, that means it went down. And the x-axis here is increasing amount of limestone as the limestone goes up over time. And as we can see from this data, I have about 3% limestone or so. The, per the strength has gone up by 10%. Wow, I bet you that's exciting to you. But as they went up more and more and more, higher and higher and higher amounts of limestone, it start strength started to go down. Somebody noticed something pretty important. When I get about 12% limestone in my cement, the strength or the overall performance was about the same. And baby, that was the golden buzzer. Yeah, yeah, 12%. Yeah, that's like totally amazing. You can use about 12% limestone and there's actually no impact on performance and you're like, okay, cool. Why is this important? Well, there's a really good reason. By using 12% limestone, you're actually replacing the clinker, the stuff that makes the most CO2 by 12%. You're reducing the carbon footprint of the concrete by about 12%. That is amazing without changing any performance. You're basically making a greener cement with almost no difference in performance. You're like, whoa, whoa, I need some more data on that performance. This is a mixture with straight Portland cement. This has different amount, different finenesses of limestone, all at 12% replacement. And look, this is strength. They're the same, about the same. They're the same, they're the same, they're pretty much the same. Now let's talk about setting time. This is how long it takes for the concrete starts to like get hard for you can step on it and use it. And this on the X, that's on the Y axis and on the X axis is the amount of limestone that's being used. And look, the lines are pretty flat. There's like no difference in set time for these mixtures. Now let's talk about shrinkage. This is just as the concrete dries, how much it's going to change volume. On the y-axis is the amount of shrinkage and on the x-axis is the age of the sample. The red line has zero limestone, the blue has five and the black has 10. You actually get less shrinkage with a higher amount of limestone. What? So why in the world does this happen? 
Well, limestone does a lot of different things for you. Number one, it improves the packing of your mixture and it increases and acts as a nucleation site. It also has some secondary reactions with the illuminates. It forms a carboilluminate, so which densifies the matrix. And it also is great to use with fly ash and slag. It'll help you get some early age strength, especially for high volume replacement. What I mean is cement may look something like this, but cement plus limestone, we've got a couple of limestone particles floating around in there. So as the cement goes to hydrate, the hydration products kind of coat everything and kind of grow together. And in the cement plus limestone, things are a little bit different. Well, the limestone actually, it starts to grow and acts as a nucleation site. These hydration products start to form on the surface and build kind of an internal bridge inside of the concrete. And then with more reaction, once the hydration products start to grow, they grow more uniformly. They grow more densely. Again, this more dense and more uniform hydration product. So how do we make PLC? Well, I've talked about how to make cements in this video. You should definitely check that out. One of the final steps in making cement is to grind things and blend them up together. So we're gonna take clinker, that's what comes out of the kiln. Then with gypsum, that helps moderate set, and then we're gonna use our friend the limestone, and we're gonna grind them up in about this proportion. 85% clinker, about 5% gypsum, and about 10% limestone. They go into this big ball mill, it spins around, it's like one of those bouncy houses from hell, right, that you would have for your kids' parties, but these have metal balls inside and they spin. Not a fun bouncy house. So. Are there any side effects of producing this powder, you know, the stuff that comes out the back? Are there any other side effects? Well, if you control the grinding process, if you've got a really good handle on it, you know the fineness of your limestone, you know the fineness of your clinker, everything's gonna turn out great. If you have to grind your clinker too much, so it gets too fine, then you can have some problems. People have been learning how to do this and manage this situation for the past decade or so, and they're getting pretty good at it. So has this ever been used? And oh boy, has it. In the United States, we've got more than 1,000 lane miles, mainly in Utah, Colorado, and in my state, Oklahoma. We've been using um, PLCs like crazy. There are major stadiums that have been built. People have done self-consolidating concrete, mass concrete, flat work, all kinds of things like this. And this is my lab. Yes, my lab. I hope you get to come visit someday. It is all made of Portland limestone cement. We have polished concrete, we had mass concrete. Look at all of that testing goodness. And we used a 35% fly ash and a PLC that inc included 12% limestone. That's about a 50% reduction in the carbon footprint over using a straight Portland cement. And that's pretty awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Farge Wholesome for working with us to make this possible. Yeah, I know, right? Awesome. So what if we always used PLCs? And that is what the Greener Cement website is all about. That's what they're trying to get people to do is more widespread use of PLCs. I think it's a really good thing. They said, for example, you would reduce 8.1 million metric tons of CO2 per year. That's what the website says. That's the same thing as taking 1.8 million cars off the road, or at least taking the CO2 away from those cars, or 940,000 homes per year, or it's like planting 10.6 million acres of forest per year. That's pretty awesome. So this greenercement.com, you should definitely go check it out. They've got CO2 calculators, case studies, fact sheets, all kinds of awesome stuff. So I know what your what's your last question is, how do we get PLCs? Well, if you are an engineer or you're an architect, you can specify it. You can say, we shall use an ASTM C595-1L cement, or I shall use an ASTM C1157 GUL, those are blended cements or performance-based cement specifications. That's where the limestone is contained right now. Or if you are just a regular consumer, you go to your favorite place to buy cement, you can look for a bag that says PLC GUL or type 1L if you don't see it. If you find someone that doesn't know about PLC, ask for it, tell them about it, share this video with them, spread the word about PLCs. So in summary, PLCs are basically cement with lower CO2. I have used them. I have tested them. I have played with them. They look, smell, 
taste like Portland cement. I've done that as well. Don't be afraid to use PLCs on your next project. They're pretty awesome. So I hope you dug this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, give me a comment below, and of course, share the video about PLCs with others. Check me out on Facebook or Instagram at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Bye. Take us out, Kermit. Yeah!